Hello and welcome to your favorite show, Identities Um Show Bojatiri, your show that talks about your social, economic, and political issues. This time we are in Matebele Land where we are talking uh, to Bulawayo Progressive Residents Association, where I'm joined but by, by my brother Emmanuel Unlov. Emmanuel, welcome to the program. Thank you. And I am joined by another brother, Melusi Moyo from Cowdery Park, a member of community. Welcome to the show. Welcome, thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. Uh, Buti Emmanuel, I know you've been implementing a program, Twai, we pay you, deliver. And I know that on identities, we've actually had the uh, the Harare or the maternal identification of that. Do you want to take us through what it looks like here in Matevela Land? The goal of the project is basically to promote a demand-driven social accountability, mm. meaning to say it capacitates the demand side. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of evidence, well to over, I mean, South Africa, however, that service delivery is going to be demand-driven. Mm. If there is no demand, you know, all those in, in, in council, in Zesa, will just relax. Mm. So it's been capacitating the demand Mas side. If demand driven, which would it in we are the ones who should be dem who should be requiring Sifunama service on allow, then we can get them. Is that what you mean? The past 10 years, Zimbabwe has experienced a significant shift from supply side driven approaches to service delivery to more dis demand side driven approaches. So, service delivery has been possible through demand mm. and capacitating the demand side. What are some of these services uh, that you're talking about when we're talking about demand side and service side? Uh, when you're talking about demand for service, what exactly are you talking about? Okay, social services delivery, for example, your water. Mm. Here in Wulawa and Matebele and the is faced in you know, perennial water problems mm. that dates back to more than 100 years, mm. and the solution is still nowhere on site. We have the housing of we have the housing problem. We have more than hundred and seventy thousand people on the council waiting housing waiting list. Mm. And the dream of owning a house for an average resident is a pipe one. It's a pipe dream. From Cowdery Park, what is the situation? Who uh, in as far as we are looking at service delivery is concerned? Elugu Funa and Jenny Zagamis. Uh Jenga zakami zisilala e e e e cart park ah ah silenda o e ukutoa ishaya ni goshe engalama services zako na like amanzi we were using communal tips as residents where a number of houses use one tip ah the issue of a zesa there is no zesa ah it comes again the issue of ah amar roads they are so depleted ah kwa service ah so we need the council to act on those. And the other problem is like with uh, terms of the developers, uh, the council is coming to uh, bring in private develop developers to build houses for people or sell stands for people. And those developers, uh, sometimes they've uh, built AMA houses which are substandard. So we want council to come in on that uh, to say maybe they should not sell a vision land to the private developer to developers. Yeah. Uh, so Gumeluti is a Kamiz Tenge, I'm a stands, Labo service corner, when the Luti, the Tole in Lalarache, as the Abbey's is it is ever as a Kamiz. Sabonga Kuluman in Dabezi is a Kakategi in Dabayoguti, a Abantu Batting, Selo Amastens, and a Grim Tetwin. Um, in the way, my services are a coil and the Kuluma le cancelled. Uh, but the Emmanuel, the seven Zanjan le cancel. We couldn't get hold of cancel code. We want to understand what through e we pay you deliver the seven Zanjan le cancel. Look, say about address. I must, I'm a problem. Law a cool in your eye. We can get park in the base housing and a manzi lama gets on a coil. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. We have a very good relationship with the Bulawa City Council. Uh, it's a listening council. And uh, we have had, of course, some setbacks here and there on issues where we disagree, but we agree to disagree. But over and above, we work well with council. We have submitted requests and they have responded. 
the Yipiama programs, early sevens allow, and Uguti e cancel a support and jan kumbeni how you have partnered Konapo Kuma services like Uba Bumoyo is talking about. We have worked well, for example, on budget consultations. When mm -hmm. council conducts uh, budget consultations, they ask us to mobilize residents on their behalf. We have done budget analysis, you know, critiquing the budget, submitted our findings to them. They've accepted some of the staff, rejected some, but I guess it is the... Uh, you, you can never get everything that you yeah. want, but if that is... Uh, uh, Kuma budget consultations law because I imagine what he budgeted Kaga taking over that's where it be in my little what is he fagging one man's is in Lin said to we so that we move away from Ama communal a silla corner cutters. Do you feel Jenny's a gamis or what he lia lia vis why in Kuma meetings law a council who was a cool mean that was then do you feel like he can't see a little lela or a manjan? Njenge za kamizi si, si ya kutaza, uh, njalo si ya kutinsi, sa wuti mm -hmm. budget uh, uh, meetings awa kuna nini. And we encourage uh, ama residents to attend. Right. Wenze lutubaya ucho, uti mm -hmm. kuyi, nukubwa shlupayo. Um, so far, singati, uh, uunye uungani wenza gala, langa unga wenza gala ukule, nga ye, ye involvement ya bandu in terms of uh, prepare for ye budget, yoguti kube la ma lem sevens ye nzo in terms of his service deliver. So siya kutazi za kami zuti zi atende yonge mm. mshanga no ya wiko na nga ukulu ya ngenda waze project. Ubabu moyo kuluma uti ma imshanga im no ingabiz wa tina njenge za kami zi. Siya hamba in imshanga no eni. Do we go and represent kumbeni singa labo abafunu ku complain kupela. Stay with us in the next segment as we come back from this break. Thank you. What the Tino Le problem in Kuru is in to as Lala was is in to as Lama Lama families like four. Ama families la go one room that will have a dorm ten. A bang ten block long year will have a dorm foot versus one toilet. The toilets are one as feel it, my feel it, let in till a way any block. Put it together so we times two. Just go on, 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 go Welcome back to your show, Identities Um Shovo Shatiri, where today we are in Bulawayo. We are talking about the services uh, that communities deserve in our community. And in the studio, I'm joined by Emmanuel Onjlovo, the coordinator, as well as Mamun Tombizodwa Kumalo from Kulumani. Welcome, Mama, to the show. Thank you. Before we went on the break, Emmanuel, you were talking about the services that people deserve. You had highlighted, I think we also had a number of issues, the issues of housing, the issues of uh, water. What other issues are we having to deal with in Wulawayo that communities are desiring for improvement? Okay, thank you. Uh, some of the issues also brought around the health, uh, around drug addiction, which is mm. a serious problem, especially amongst the youths. Which kind of drugs? I think it's, it's it's a variety. Recently, yeah. we hear that even in a in a pulp, mm. the there's some kind of a powder wow. that when they break a pulp with those old TV sets, some kind of a, a powder that they then inhale, which uh, assists them to achieve a status of being high. So that is a, a very serious problem. Mm. Yeah, Mama, Livelen Kulumani, you're representing community. Mm. Who which children are affected um with uh, what age groups are we talking about here? Yeah, it's all age groups. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to speak from Gulumani only, but mm. I'll speak for different areas in the city. 
the way I'm eating Gulumani. Mm. At Gulumani, we have got some sports clubs mm. which have been now turned to night clubs. Wow. Yes, so you find that some minor children, 16 years downwards, even 17, they usually go there and there is too much commercial sex to practice there, which is causing a uh, high prevalence rate in HIV and AIDS. Mm. And that is specifically affecting the girl child worse than mm. the boy child because these are uh, business people, even other community leaders, the so-called rich people always take advantage of these vulnerable girls, mm. work from childhood families, who have dropped out of school, and others who are still at school. Right. That leads to school dropout again. Mm. And again, we've got some drugs where it's just said to be sold by some people. They are taken from hospitals, like human is alluded to some powders. Mm. There are these powders which are used at mortuaries. There are wow. some ARVs, and there are some cough mixtures which are now turned to drug. My God. So, see, see in journey. So, you're saying it's all age groups, and you're saying a lot of painful and deep issues would want to attacking things as far as from emotion yes. mm -hmm. to what is leading this this addiction to drug use that we end up having those things and how do they discover these things sure exactly but it's surprisingly sold by older people in, in the communities so far, we have called some pop, um, public meetings and uh, invited some um, people from EZRP, like a member in charge, uh, victim-friendly officers, to speak to our youth and to mm. communities. There are some people who are said to be paper traitors. Unfortunately, those people are just working and continuing with their business got free because they've always said there is no evidence that they are selling drugs. Mm. So as a community, we are not happy. Um, like at Pumula, we have lost two souls. Two youths died at a nightclub. It's a nightclub. It's acting like a nightclub, but it's, a, it's said to be a, a, a sports bar, which is supposed to close at 10, but they wake up for the whole night. So we have even asked the council to review the licensing of those uh, mm. uh, sports bars. Which if it's a sports bar, which is supposed to be closed at 10, then that person operates for the uh, whole night. Then as citizens, we are saying no to that, and we are mm. saying those uh, nightclubs must be must be part. They must and be part from. Uh, mm. They must be closed and not operating in the communities. Because in the past years, we never had any sports bar, we never had any nightclub or in the community, even uh, according to the laws. It, we are not supposed to have those uh, high volumes of radios mm. the whole night. Mm. You cannot sleep, you cannot study. It affects every, everyone. Mm. How are you working with the council to address some of the issues that Umama is bringing, the issue of um, the nightclubs that are being opened in centres that never used to be nightclubs, the issues of adhering to times where if they, someone is authorised to operate until 10, mm -hmm. they are going the whole, the whole night. How are you guys working with council to make sure that the council, also with the citizens, to make sure that those in authority are kept accountable and also monitoring us? Because we, at the end of the day, if mm -hmm. I'm authorized to open and operate until 10 o'clock and I'm the one who's going beyond 10 into 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. mm. I think when your own mama Kumalo had touched on it briefly. Mm -hmm. But as an association, we do have former residents petitioning Right. Through Pupra to have, for example, my license is revoked. Mm. I remember in Kulmane there was a sports club where uh, I went to and I was being invited to the, the swimmers, strippers and so forth. Mm. And residents complained to wrote to council mm. about the issue with why but why are you giving these people like this a license? Mm. So we we are hoping that the full council is going to meet soon, that those are some of the issues that they are going mm. to be seized with. Uh, I will make a specific reference to Entumban, where the residents of Entumban under the PPRA, what mm. ten structure, mobilized themselves, they marched with placards mm. to a certain house a lady was supposedly selling uh, mm. these drugs to school kids, and a police officer was actually arrested after the demonstration where residents produced evidence, and he was actually caught. So you're saying it was, wow, okay.
Yeah, so there's actually a chronically newspaper on the 11th of December. A police officer was arrested for selling drugs to school kids. So this we can hear that this is the power of residents actually taking action and providing, having, helping authorities provide mm -hmm. evidence. Mama, as we finish this segment, what is it that you want to see happen in Bulawayo to address the issues that you've spoken about, drugs, children being exposed, coming out of school, HIV including? What is it that you'd want to speak to authority right now? Okay. Um, as Bulawayo, we think that this city must be a developed uh, city. Mm. It's always... Uh, it has always been a first class city mm -hmm. in terms of cleanliness, mm. water purification, right. and health issues. So, we are calling for our council to provide youth centers for, young, for our young people, mm. uh, to provide women's clubs for our women. Because the woman, the girl child, are the people who suffer a lot in right. terms of service delivery. When there's no water, when then there's no electricity and so forth. So we believe that as long as the mind is not capacitated, mm. we are not going to achieve the goals of we pay, we deliver. Right. So once these youths, these women are mm. capacitated, they've got money, they've got community projects, there's transparency even in community work and community uh, projects which are sponsored by the council. We are going to achieve, we pay, we deliver. So that is residents, we are going to be responsible in payment. Then mm. after paying, we call the, the, our local authorities to account. On that point, the note where Mama is telling us that we need help, as well as the citizens themselves also helping themselves, it is important that we we raise the issues that we're not happy about, but also taking action that is within the legal framework as citizens. And as we end this, we take a break. Do stay with us. We come back and we continue with the discussions. I'm from Watin in Tumbani. In challenges lie in Tumbani, issue of drugs. Lavanda Batengsa Ama drugs is governed to and it's killing a community. Avantuana, Abasa Hambes, Paul, Abasa Fundi, Ama teachers, they are having a problem because of the drug issue in LA. Lati, oh mama, we are the weaker species, we are vulnerable. As a better time, drugs are very high, they can do anything with our mama. So, a community it is no longer safe. Mobavantu Lava Batengsa Ama drugs, they are doing willy nilly. And we are affected even our pass rates from our schools at Tosilao locally. So we would appreciate if something is done in issue of drugs. Hello and welcome back to your show Identity Zoom Clover Shatiri. And in the studio I have uh Uput U Emmanuel Ndlovu. And we are also joined now by a resident from Pumula South, Ubabu Timbalani Dube. Welcome Baba to the show. Thank you. Uh Buti Emmanuel, before we went on break, we spoke about the role of citizens. We spoke about the issues that especially people are facing in Bulawayo and some of the programs that we've been running um, in We Pay You Deliver, uh, including the housing issues, water issues, issues of drug abuse, issues of HIV and it's, it's affecting citizens, uh, issues of um, many issues. Um, that could be spoken about, but we haven't had an issue, uh, the situation of how we are addressing corruption in the city. How is that going? Thank you. Uh, I think that has also been one of our biggest programs under the We Pay You Deliver. Mm. So what we did was we conducted a research mm -hmm. throughout the country, 10 provinces, as Bupra, where we were looking at corruption in local authorities, how it was manifesting, and what were some of its effects. And then we came up to recommendations. So we consulted a lot of stakeholders throughout Zimbabwe. And <coughs> corruption actually, a runaway corruption in local authorities is actually one of the biggest cancers wow. affecting, leading to poor service delivery. We ended up coming with programs to say, okay, uh, what is it that we can do to arrest this runaway corruption? with the maybe asset disclosure mm. being one of the strategies 
before one becomes a councillor, to declare to residents, to say, okay, this is who I am, this is what I own, this is a, these are my sources of income. How practical is it to ask our leaders to declare their assets? Is, are they willing, as community, as is Aramizi, do you think we can do that? I think it's very much possible for one to declare his or her own assets, as long as that particular individual is a, is a willing leader, because as below residents, we require a that as a court. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and thereby declaring one's asset, it shouldn't be a problem if those assets were acquired uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a transparent manner. And the reason why um, the, the people may be afraid of declaring those assets, uh, as residents, we may, may end up thinking that uh, maybe those assets were not acquired in a transparent manner. Right. But, Are you willing as citizens, Uti, and is there a way that as citizens you can say, only the law has acquired five assets. What difference does it make to you as Zagamis? Lagumane like, like has been saying, if there is that baseline whereby we're saying this individual mm. came in here with a, a two-roomed house, mm -hmm. they need to be surprised for us to find out that the person is all of a sudden acquired maybe three stands in the eastern, three stands in his eastern suburbs, or has maybe bought. Uh, uh, houses in the eastern suburbs. While well, uh, that person, before he got, uh, he or she got into council, had only two rooms. Mm. So the, that baseline survey is very important. That's why we, we, we requested our, our, our councillors, for instance, to declare their assets. And uh, to our surprise, only two councillors have so far declared. And, uh, was it is it a binding thing that is in the bylaws for someone to be a leader or this is just is a fee so there's a comes what our leaders could do A B C D. As much as Ungaba is a fee so but I think accountability has to start from uh, the local level. Mm -hmm. even at national level, I think some ministers are declaring the assets. Umbozoan, mm. do we have a law that requires yeah. them to do that or it's sub something that they can do or cannot do? Can I, mm -hmm. can I come in on that one? Yeah, section 198 of the constitution actually compels public office holders to declare their assets, incomes, you know, and financial interests. We have had the parliament of Zimbabwe. Parliamentarians have declared their assets. Mm. So I don't see any harm why councillors should not do the same. I want to come back to him and say, mm. you mentioned about the two, the two councillors that we actually hear from. Yes. How has how easy has it been for them? Out of how many councillors? Out of twenty nine. Out of twenty nine. So two councillors have done that. How how easy did they just come on board and then say, oh, we want to declare our interest? Actually, we had invited them to 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 to, to a residence meeting. Mm -hmm that was convened uh, in, 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 in Kulumane to come and declare right. their assets. And everyone was invited, but only two pitched up, which means relatively it becomes very difficult for some to come and, what, and declare. But, it's, but if the truth can be said, it, it, it is uh, to their benefit mm -hmm. for them to come and declare. If already I own a house or if the councillor owns a house in the eastern suburbs or so five five houses and and, I declare, and and he or she declares that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So Ksiba Lula at the end of the day to say, no, I didn't acquire these properties while I was in mm -hmm. council. I already I, I brought them when I was coming into council. So I don't think they can be a problem if people can be truthful to themselves. How do you feel like, um, I understand this is a campaign that you've started here in Ulawayo. Do you think that it's possible for other communities to catch up onto this campaign as we end the program? Yeah, it is very possible for other stakeholders to take on the campaign. I mean, it's a good standard, uh, best practice in South Africa and Kenya. It has been used mm. before. Yeah, so, and I know Wange, they've already picked up the campaign and are also asking their councillors to do the same. And it actually helps because we have a register mm. of public assets that is updated annually. And the residents can go and access it to say, let me see what my councillor mm. has been able to, to achieve, okay? Well, as we end the program. Yes, I'm going to tell you that we're going to be able to do it. We're going to be able to do it. We're going to be able to do it.
the examples that we've had from Lawayo in ensuring that we increase transparency in our councils, which are responsible for the development of our communities. Do you think this is something that you can carry on in your community uh, to begin so such conversations for our leaders to declare their assets? Until next time, folks, have a good day. Goodbye.